Angelo Leo versus Mike Planilla, 10 rounds in the 126 pound division. This one is taking place on the 31st of this month in Plant City, Florida. Another membership requested videos that I am going to get done. Let's get into it. Let's start with the former WBO junior featherweight champion, Angelo Leo. 22 wins, one loss, 10 wins by way of knockout. Leo, to me, man, is a very, very good fighter. He's tough. He brings the pressure. And while he doesn't have that one-shot knockout type of power, he's got good pop in his hands, obviously, to be a champion, you have to be a good quality fighter with good fundamentals and good skills. And you have to have something that kind of separates you from the rest. His only loss came from when he fought Cool Boy Steph. And that was a fight to me where even though he lost the fight, he put forth a heck of a performance, man. Showed a lot of heart and will in the fight. He never made it easy for cool boy Steph by no means, right? He was bringing the pressure. And the only thing for me was, even though he was bringing that good of a work to Steel Fulton, man, offensively, his defense was lacking and he was getting countered and getting hit cleanly and often. And sometimes it felt like he smothered his work a little bit, right? When he was fighting Fulton on the inside, it felt like sometimes he wasn't able to get what he needed to get off because he was too busy trying to anticipate rather than just hitting what was in front of him. But at the same time, man, Fulton's speed, uh, defensive mindset and skill set, counterpunching quickness and movement just made it tough for Leo consistently to really solidify and get his groove going. But he did have great moments in the fight, and I thought he fought a very, very good, solid fight, even in defeat. After that, he fought Aaron Almeida, and those two were going back and forth, back and forth the entire night. Both men were having success. Both men were countering each other effectively. Both men was hitting each other nicely, landing clean shots A piece from both men right? Almeida was landing clean uppercuts very early on in the fight. And there are fights that we see and you may see skills. You may see that boxing ability, right? You may see them fight on the outside, almost that chess aspect of it, so to speak. But these two men, look, de defense was not a priority when these two men were standing in front of each other and fighting front foot, front foot action right in front of each other, throwing hands, and it wasn't until the fifth round that I saw uh, Angelo Leo start to make little adjustments and think more defensively in his approach. And I'm glad he did because his face was looking a little rough. Face was looking real rough. Eyes were starting to swell up a little bit. But when he started to make those adjustments, man, you got to see that he can box on the outside, right? You got to see him use his feet a little bit to stay off the ropes and corners and start to change angles to try to give himself a better opportunity to land his shots. And he started to steal some of the momentum that Almeida was building off of. There were some close rounds between the two back and forth, but I thought Leo did enough to win the fight. But if he hadn't made those adjustments defensively, man, and kind of made it a priority, I don't think he would have gotten the nod because he was getting hit cleanly when he was just coming forward, just going off the front foot. But the moment that he made those adjustments and stepped back a little bit, didn't smother his work and actually gave himself separation to load up on his punches a little bit. That's when he started to become more of a multi-dimensional fighter instead of that come forward aggressive one-dimensional type of guy. He can bang, but it also reminded us that, man, he can box if he needs to. I thought against Amita, he did just that. He showed us that multi-dimensional aspect of the skill set that he does possess. But the frustrating part was that he didn't use his jab a whole lot. He was just trying to impose his will and the physicality in the fight without setting things up. So I'm hoping in this fight, he uses that jab and he's more selective with the shots that he's putting forward. In his most recent fight, he fought Nicholas Polanco, who is an experienced fighter, but someone whom Leo should be able to win against, at least on paper when you're looking at it from that standpoint. But that's exactly what he did, and they stopped him in the ninth round. But it was how he won that fight, man. I thought he showed us all what he could do and why he did have that former champion pedigree and why he was once a champion. I thought he did a great job of breaking Polanco down tactically 
and strategically each and every single round. And it really was a very good quality performance and a win that, you know, needed a win that helps him build that momentum and that confidence going into this fight because I think this could be a great year for Angelo Leo. Man, he's got the skill, he's got the talent. Uh, obviously, he needs to make some better defensive adjustments, but there's no reason why Angelo Leo can't be fighting for a title at some point down the road or at least be in contention to face those top guys in the division. Let's talk about his opponent, Mike Planilla, because Planilla is not going to make this an easy fight. It's kind of a crossroad, crossroad type of fight for him, and he needs to have a spectacular showing in order to beat Angelo Leo. Mike Planilla, 29 wins, 3 losses, 16 wins by way of knockout. I like Planilla. I think he's an exciting fighter, man. I think he's explosive. I think he's got that dynamic movement and ability to him. I remember when he fought Rea Salim. And a bunch of people were saying, man, you know, Akeem, I went with Aleem. A lot of people were saying, Akeem, Plenty is going to knock Aleem out. We'll see, right? We'll see. I just felt like Aleem uh, was quicker, a little stronger, threw better combinations, and would make better adjustments if need be. And when they fought, it was a dominant performance from Ray Aleem. Planilla didn't have an answer for the speed, the quickness of Aleem. Planilla likes to fight off the front foot, but he doesn't always throw when he's in position of his opponent to land when he's on the front foot, right? And if he could do that, because he can punch, but sometimes he's in front of his opponent and he's anticipating what they're trying to do. And rather than, rather than just letting your hands go, he waits for his opponent to take back the momentum and just as quickly as he was fighting on the front foot, the momentum changed, and now he's the one backing up and moving laterally, and he missed his opportunity to land that right hand or that left hand with the pop that he does possess. So sometimes he's a little bit indecisive when he's got his opponent right in front of him. Now, when he fought Elijah Pierce, that was a bit of a different story, right? I thought, personally, I thought he was doing very well until he got clipped. He was fighting the bigger, taller guy, but he was boxing smartly to me, bringing that calculated aggression and, and, and pressure to me, right? Throwing consistent punches, closing the gap on Pierce, any applying uh, good pressure. And he was confident in the ring, moving with confidence. And he was punching with it too. And, you know, he, he, he wasn't getting hit a whole lot because he would jump forth and then jump back. And he would change different angles and give us different looks. So he wasn't getting hit a whole lot very early in the fight, but I thought he was a little bit too overconfident because he was staying in the pocket a little bit longer than he needed to. And we know Elijah Pierce got good pop in his shots. And when you stay too long in the pocket, man, you may walk into something that you should not have been walking into. Planilla has a way of dropping his hands, right? He kind of jump cuts. He'll jump in and jump out. But sometimes his hands is low when he is jumping out and that's when he gets himself in trouble. It was in the clinch situation where he was clinching up Elijah Pierce and when he was breaking away from that clinch, Elijah came through with the right hand, landed cleanly, dropped him, and he was never able to get back up after that. So the technical mistakes that Mike Planilla makes, he always seems to make it at the wrong time in the fights that he's kind of lost or the fights that he hasn't came up uh, with the win, right? We know he's explosive and he's dynamic, but he's not like that every single round, and that's what his opponents are able to capitalize on. All it takes is a moment to seize the opportunity. And so that was a tough fight, you know, to, to, to watch if you're a, if you're a Mike Planilla uh, a supporter because he was doing so well until in the split of a second, things change. But isn't that boxing? One punch can change a situation. One punch can change anything if it connects at the right time. In his most recent fight, he fought Daniel Nicholas, who has a record of seven wins. I want to say either three losses or four losses. So it wasn't exactly supposed to be a tough fight. It was supposed to be a fight for him to get that momentum back, get the confidence back, and to get back into the win column. And he needed to win it convincingly, and he did. He closed out the show in the first round with a beautifully timed body shot. Planilla, when he targets the body, man, it's so quick. It's snappy. He's effective if that's where he is targeting. But he closed out the show uh, very quickly. But even against Nicholas, man, 
there were some times when Mike Planilla got caught with some shots and some shots where he should have been able to evade. But you got the sense that in that fight, he did not respect his opponent. And so he wasn't really worried about what his opponent can do to him as much as what he was trying to do and impose to his opponent. And that's what he did. Planilla is effective when he's in that mid-distance range. He needs space to load up on his shots. And if you give him space, he's quick enough and agile enough to get out of the way and evade if need be. But if you pressure him, there's a good chance he's going to be the one backing up into a corner. And sometimes, man, he kind of freezes up a little bit if the pressure is on. But Planilla, when he's in his groove, when he's feeling good, when he's moving well, when he's using his jab, when he can just jump in, loop that hand in, that's when he's at his best, when he's on the offensive. But he does have his laps in moments where he lets his hands drop and it often finds himself in trouble to get countered, to get hit cleanly. So this is going to be a very interesting fight. So who wins? You know, I think this could be a 50-50 fight. Uh, I think it could go either way, in my opinion, depending on how each guy looks. As I said, I think it's a crossroad fight for both men, and both men need to come away with a win, especially Mike Planilla. He already has three losses. A fourth loss kind of changes the trajectory of things for him, in my opinion. So it's going to be interesting to see what's the game plan, how these guys are going to adjust, and how they actually come out in the fight. I think Angelo Leah comes on top because he's going to try and smother Planilla. We know Planier is an explosive fighter, and he needs a little bit of space and separation to generate his shots. And if you don't allow him to just jump in and jump out, man, it's going to be hard for him to generate momentum, let alone to, uh, let alone to generate that power and that explosiveness for him, for his skill set to be on display. So I don't think he's going to get that same opportunity, man. I think he's going to have to fight on the inside. And as the smaller man trying to fight the bigger man, and Angelo Leo knows how to fight on the inside. He knows how to bring the pressure on the inside. I think Angelo Leo will be able to smother uh, Plania, and he is going to win this fight by decision. I could possibly see a late stoppage, but I think this fight goes the full distance, and I think Angelo Leo wins this fight by decision. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Shout out to all of the members holding down the membership section, man. I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.